Hi, and welcome to Best in Tesla News, episode 103. I just got back from my extreme road trip in Norway, and boy, did that get extreme. But I have a lot of more videos coming about that, so stay tuned for that. But in this week's news episode, well, Tesla just held their earnings call and broke all records. Oil companies are saying the tides are shifting. And the global BEV market doubled last year. And Mary, embarrassing, is out making new claims that is not rooted in reality. And we have a new Tesla product. And the Fremont factory became the most productive auto factory in America. And that's Tesla's least productive factory. All this and much, much more on today's episode. Start right in. And Tesla just held their earnings call, and as expected, it was records all around. <sighs> Again. I just made a whole video about this, so we'll not go in depth in this new show, but just give you some of the highlights and a few things I didn't mention in the video. So Tesla had $17.7 billion in revenue. Automotive gross margin was 30.6%, leaving the entire year at 29.3% automotive gross margin. Just amazing, and that was up from 256 in 2020. And Tesla paid off $1.2 billion in debt and now only has about $5.2 billion in debt. And even though they did pay off all of that debt, they still put about $1.5 billion in the bank and now has over $17.2 billion in the bank. Their EBITDA was just over $4 billion in Q4 alone, and the whole year was $11.6 billion, almost as much EBITDA in 2021 as Tesla had in revenue in all of 2017 just an amazing growth here so all in all just a very healthy growing company and as tesla wrote we have sufficient liquidity to found our product roadmap long-term capacity expansion plans and other expenses yes tesla is no longer in any kind of financial trouble and has become a very well run and profitable company and another great milestone they hit was this chart that shows that Tesla has actually now become a fully profitable company since its inception. So not just that Tesla is profitable every quarter now, but Tesla is profitable even if we look at all their expenses and losses going back to their inception. This is a big milestone. And their battery storage system did also grow by 32% in 2021, but it was only 4 gigawatt hours and they have just built a 40 gigawatt hour mega pack factory, so that will definitely shoot up like crazy here in 2022. I did make a mistake in the last video. I thought I heard Elon say that they would be able to produce up to 1 million Cybertrucks a year, but he said a quarter of a million, so not as good as I thought or thought I heard. But it was late here in Denmark, so maybe I was just too tired. But not one million, just a quarter of a million. But Elon also shared that Tesla now has over 60,000 full self driving beta testers in Q4 from only a couple of thousand last quarter. This is huge. Tesla will get so much more data now with 60,000 beta users. No one else has this amount of cars collecting data for them. And Tesla also shared that they now have 31,500. 500 superchargers worldwide and counting. And the Tesla Model Y that is coming out of the Giga Texas will start with the 4680 sale, but not the Model Y coming out of Berlin. And Tesla will start deliveries of the Model Y from Texas this quarter. And Tesla has now become the OEM with the best operating margin in the world. As Elon said, 2021 was a breakthrough year for Tesla. There should no longer be doubt about the viability and profitability of electric vehicles. 
Exactly. There are no more excuses. Now it's time to execute. Tesla has shown the way by becoming the OEM with the best operating margins in the industry with only sales of electric vehicles. But one thing is for sure, Wall Street is not going to get this because Tesla talked about full self-driving and Tesla robot. So they just tune out when this happens. So I think this is so important and so very interesting for the future of Tesla. But Wall Street just don't get it. So of course the stock goes down, like it almost always does after a Tesla earnings call, even though they are always announcing records all around. But hey, I was looking to buy some Tesla stocks anyway, so just perfect for me, then I can buy the dip. But if you want more information about the earnings call, you can go see the whole video I made about that earnings call. But in short, Tesla is up on all metric that matters. And I think James made the best chart here that illustrate Tesla's growth the best. Just look at this chart. Now that is an exponential growth chart. And as we can see, Tesla is speeding up, even with all of this competition that has come. How anyone can look at these numbers and still think Tesla is a scam? Well, they need to go to see a doctor or something they need help. 2021 was a real breakthrough year for the EVs, but it also seems to be the tipping point for the charging stations. The oil company BP reported to Reuters that its fast EV charges it is putting up at their gas station will very soon be more profitable than filling up gasoline-powered vehicles. BP's head of customers and products said, if I think about a tank of fuel versus a fast charge, we are nearing a place where the business fundamentals on the fast charging are better than they are on the fuel. The rapid rise of EV charging demand and profitability is quite the contrast to just a few years ago. EV charges and their expansion has been losing money for BP and its rival for years. But the tides is now shifting. And BP has over 11,000 charges today and this will increase to 70,000 charges by 2030. As they say, overall we see a huge opportunity in the fast charging for consumers and businesses. That's where we see the growth and where we see the margins. But this is also a very good comparison to what Tesla is doing. They already have over 31,000 superchargers and want to have 90,000 superchargers by 2023. Not 2030, but to see BB talk about it as the new business opportunity and where the growth is and the margins are heading, well, that just made Tesla's decision to make huge expansions to their charging network and opening up to other EVs makes even more sense and shows us that Tesla will become a big player in the new electric world fueling stations and be a competitor to BP. But Tesla is just a car company. But another big boy in the oil industry that has been seeing the light is Shell. They have even more aggressive plans than BP. They want to have 500,000 charging points by 2025. And we do already have some of them here in Denmark with 350 kilowatts charging. So that is great. And I did also see some of them in Norway on my road trip I just did. So this is so cool. The tides are truly shifting. And we also got the last couple of numbers from December here in Europe. In December, the Tesla Model 3 did become Europe's best-selling car of any kind, just like it did in September. So last month of the last two quarters, the Tesla Model 3 became the best-selling car in Europe. So not only was it the first time in history an EV took the number one spot in Europe when Tesla Model 3 took the number one spot in September, unheard of, but the Tesla Model 3 did it again, only three months later. And the Tesla Model 3 did of course become the best-selling EV in Europe in 2021, over 113,000 units. And number two was the little Sorry with just over 61,000 units. So no longer any close race for the number one spot in Europe. Volkswagen did end up as the best-selling EV brand in Europe, just 6,000 units in front of Tesla. So that was a close race, but the number three was Renault, about 57,000 units lower than the Tesla. It will be very interesting to see 
see how Tesla will do when it will not have to transport them all from China, but have a constant flow of cars coming from the Giga Berlin factory. First with the Model Y, of course, but as we also found out by the earnest call, these Model Ys from the Berlin factory will have the 2170 cells to begin with and only get the 4680 cells when the battery factory at the Berlin factory is done. But I don't think this will matter much when it comes to the sales of the Model Y. Just look at the sales here in Europe. Model Y actually ended up being the 13th best-selling EV in Europe in 2021 even though it only have one and a half quarter in Europe to do so. So it will be very fun to see how Tesla will do in Europe this year, if they can take the number one spot from that Volkswagen brand. And the global BEV market did double in 2021 compared to 2020. And this was not including hybrids, but just BEVs. Yeah, that is the beginning of an S-curve. I don't think we will see any increase in car sales this year and 2021 there were about 66 million vehicles sold. But there is still a chip shortage and Toyota has already said that they will not be able to reach their targets for 2022. So maybe we will see something like 65 million vehicles sold this year. But I believe we will see something between 8 to 10 million BEVs sold this year. If this is the case, BEVs will probably become something like 12 to 15 percent of the market share already this year. So more than double this year because 12 percent of 65 million vehicles sold would only be 7.8 million BEVs. And I think that is too low. So more than a doubling of the market share this year, that would mean that the market share for BEVs this year could already be four to five times higher than it was just two years ago. Do you see how fast this is growing? This is absolutely not a linear curve, but a very steep S-curve. And someone like Ford, GM, Toyota and so on, production of BEVs is not very fast. So if they don't hurry up, well, someone like the Chinese will come in and help with the supply for the EV demand. Here in Europe, they have already arrived. We both have NIO, Xping, Polestar, MG, Airway and BYD. They all have models here in Europe and will definitely not hold back, but try to scale up as fast as possible. So this transition will not wait for the ones that are holding back or have arrived a little late to the party and don't have the supply chain ready like batteries and chips and so on. But 2022 will show how much talk someone like GM is and how much work they do. After this year, it will be hard to continue just to talk and not bring some action to the market with high volume of BEVs. So it will become very clear after 2022 who's in trouble and who is in the game. And Mary Barra is out saying again that they will catch Tesla sales in 2025. GM has projected it will sell more than 1 million EVs globally by mid-decade and overtake Tesla as the top US-based seller of electric vehicles during that time frame. So the target hasn't changed, it's still just 1 million by 2025, but they didn't say 2025, but just mid-decade. So not 2025, or else they would just have said 2025, but mid-decade, could also be 2026. They will hit their target of 1 million BEVs and they would not have been wrong. But is she really this deluded, that she believes that this is enough to catch Tesla? Tesla did almost do 1 million last year, and she thinks they can get there in 4 to 5 years, so should Tesla just stop everything they do and don't turn on the last two new factories they have built and just completely stop their growth? Of course not, Mary. Tesla's growth has only been speeding up. So for her to say that she believed that 1 million BEVs in 2025 will be enough to catch Tesla in 2025, it's just totally detached from reality. It's like GM cannot see anything outside their little bubble. This will be embarrassingly wrong already this year, when Tesla will sell between 1.5 to 2 million vehicles. And then what, Mary? How are your 1 million in 2025 or mid-decade going to catch Tesla when they are already far ahead of that? 
This is so embarrassing to see how detached from reality GM is. Seems like they have no clue of what's going on. This will not end very well for GM with a leader that does not know what their competition is doing whatsoever. And by the way, GM just said they will spend $6.6 .6 billion to dethrone Tesla. But to put that into perspective, that is still less than what Elon paid in taxes last year. And Jim Farley, Ford CEO, was also out saying that Ford is leading the EV revolution. But Jim is getting it as he has said it many times that Tesla is the one to catch and is leading the EV race. So Jim, please stop using these sentences like Ford is leading the EV revolution. It just doesn't make sense for a company that has only really joined the EV race last year with one car. To say stuff like that, you will just lose the trust of the people if you are saying stuff that is clearly not true. So sorry Jim, you joined the game, you are not leading the game by any means. But I guess he just wants some of that love that Daddy Biden has given GM. Because Jim was going to meet with the president to talk about how to get more drivers behind the wheels of EVs and help American workers lead the global transition to zero emission transportation. Well, that is easy, just let Tesla do what Tesla does. Firstly, they only have zero emission vehicles. Tesla is leading the global EV transition and they did get above 936,000 drivers behind the wheels of an EV. And Alex did make a funny little tweet here about all these leaders in the EV race and even Elon thought that was funny. And just to put a little more salt in the wounds of legacy automakers, well, Tesla's Fremont factory became the most productive auto factory in America. Last year, Tesla's Fremont factory in California produced an average of 8,550 cars per week. That is more than Toyota's factory in Kentucky with 8,427 cars per week, or BMW's factory in South Carolina with 8,343 vehicles per week, or Ford's iconic truck plant in Michigan with 5,564 units per week. This is according to the Bloomberg analyst of production data from more than 70 manufacturing facility. But the crazy thing is that the Tesla Fremont plant is Tesla's least efficient factory and will open their Tesla factory any day now that will be so much more productive and Tesla's Fremont factory is already more productive than Ford in producing cars. Even though Ford is producing ICE cars which they have over a hundred years experience in. But Tesla's worst factory just be their hundred years of experience and they think they will catch up with Tesla but they can't even keep up today in production speed and Tesla is about to take this to a whole new level as they open up the new plant that will have about five times more production capacity than Fremont. They don't stand a chance. Yeah, 2022 is going to be one big power demonstration from Tesla. And let's take our weekly tour of Tesla's Gigafactory. That means handing it over to Brian from My Tesla Weekend. Take it away, Brian. Hey Lars, well, another big week of construction around the world. Starting in Shanghai, we can see that the steelwork is topped off as evidenced by the banner, and there's a lot more work going on on the roof. Good work in the southwest corner. And you can also even see that it's uh, got a cement covering, and there's some solar panels over here. Now, if you're curious, those are not the photovoltaic variety, but the kind that just exchange heat by letting warm air out through tubes in the winter and cold air out in the summer. Very efficient stuff. Over in Berlin, we've got the new artwork going in. It looks great. We've got uh, some employee parking that's well underway. And of course, the utility slash wastewater area, at least that's what we're pretty sure it is, is moving along nicely, getting new beams and girders and all that good stuff. The cell factory for 4680s is also moving along nicely, getting some new interior walls. It's going, it's going great. In Texas, well, uh, the aprons have been fully paved and there's more paving going on in the south, uh, likely for the loading and logistics lot. At least that's what I think. 
window work is completing and getting done quickly, and they've removed a couple of sections near the corner in the southeast to allow for fancy-shaped windows, which I think look very cool. Maybe they even serve a purpose. There's earthworks in the parking area. That's good, that's helpful and necessary, and a lot more solar panels have been installed on the roof. Yeah, those are coming along nice, and they've even started pressure washing the roof, getting rid of the dirt and grime. Haven't seen that on a Tesla factory. It's pretty interesting. What do you think, Lars? Well, I think it's very interesting. Tesla has so far taken it kind of one step at a time, building one phase of the factories at a time, but not in Texas. They are just building the whole factory in one go, putting solar panels on straight away. This factory will look very much done and finished by this summer with that speed. So exciting. Thank you so much for the update, Brian. See you next week. I know many YouTubers are offering two free stocks, but I got the best deal for you. If you live in the US, Hong Kong or China, get five free stocks valued up to $3,500 each. Yes, you won't get a much better deal than that. Who don't want five free stocks, right? Well, you can do that with Moomoo online trading platform if you sign up with my link down below. That will also support the channel. So a win-win for the both of us. If you don't live in the US, Hong Kong or China, you can still download the Moomoo app as I have done because this is a professional trading platform so you will have all the information you could possibly want about stocks, drawing tools, communities, news and much much more. It is a very impressive and capable app they have made there so go check that one out. This will not support the show but you will get a great professional app for keeping an eye on the stock you follow. Enjoy. And let's squeeze in the last short news topics into this new show. Yes, it's time for the Tesla Shorts. And Tesla didn't make a whole new video showing off some of the power of their unappreciated technology of their HEPA filters in the car, as they fired off some red smoke in a plastic bubble, but no red smoke got into the cabin of the Tesla, but you can see the other cars without the Tesla HEPA filter filled up with red smoke. Yeah, another pro for buying a Tesla over anything else. And Sawyer shared on Twitter that Tesla superchargers in North America will get a charging speed bump to 325 kilowatt later this year. Oh yes. And Sandy Monroe is starting to rip apart the Tesla Model S Plaid. And so far he is very impressed with the car as he said, it's to die for. Tell you a little bit about what we liked and didn't like about the vehicle. Um, mostly it's going to be likes. I mean, this is a really fine vehicle. This thing is, is really and truly a superior luxury car. If you're in this car for a long time and you're in the front seats, which I think are the best seats on the planet, everything's wonderful. But in the rear seat, for some reason or other, um, your back starts to hurt. So that's my short list. In fact, it is a short list because we really didn't find that much wrong with the car. Because Corey hogged it, none of us really got much of a chance to use this car because Corey fell in love with it and, um, and that, that's the end of it. This is truly a luxury vehicle. Ooh, whoa, nice. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what is that? I think they integrated the air tank into the cross carbine. No. So this is the, the air tank for the air suspension, integrated mm. into a structural member. Cool. So smart. You know, the integration on these cars is just to die for. And if you want to have a little more fun, don't forget to see the video I just did looking back at Mark Spiegel's prediction from 2018 and see how all these Tesla killers are doing compared to Tesla. But James also made a little chart here that shows the Tesla killers in the US and they are not really killing anything, are they? What a joke these Tesla killers has become. And if you live in the UK and are waiting for the Model Y, well, it looks like it's coming very soon. Nice. And we did see a little test of a Geely EV versus Tesla. Yeah, the Tesla didn't hardly move and the Geely just went on its side straight away. Something we have seen in crash test that is almost impossible to get a Tesla to do. Even their big SUV always falls back on their wheels because of the low center of gravity. Guess the Geely is not as safe and well built as a Tesla. 
and James showed a great little visual of Tesla's climb from 13th place to the number one spot of luxury vehicle sales in the US. Yep, Tesla is not just selling about 12 times more EVs in the US than GM. It is the all dominating force, but now Tesla has also become a big player in the luxury car market, EV or not. And no wonder Tesla is doing great in the US. The Tesla Model 3, the Tesla Model Y, the Tesla Model S achieved the highest score of JD Power's latest US electric vehicle experience ownership study. And for the premium battery electric vehicles, for the second year in a row, the Model 3 took the number one spot. The Model Y took the number two spot and the Model S took the number three spot. This is why Tesla keeps selling more and more cars because more and more people are experiencing just how good these cars are. And Tesla is getting ready for yet another big export from Shanghai. Just look at this sea of Teslas waiting to go on a little boat trip. And Honda CEO says Toyota's strategy to pursue hydrogen cars doesn't seem feasible. As he said, we have conducted research into every possibility that is out there. As far as hydrogen engines, we see some quite difficult technological challenges. So about 10 years ago, we decided this would not become mainstream for small mobility. But Honda still tried to adopt it to customers, but that was probably just because of backing from the Japanese government. But yeah, not many is left that is betting on hydrogen cars, but Toyota. And if you are in doubt of just how good Tesla's full self-driving beta is becoming, well, Ilias here put together a nice little chart that showed how many disengagements per mile his full self-driving beta have. And only with the version 10, we can see it has gone from 0.22 to only 0.04. Yep, it is learning fast. And we do see some leaked documents from Volkswagen that shows that Volkswagen's dealers are only making about 4.5% margin selling the ID4 and no bonuses versus over 14% for fossil fuel vehicles. This is a big difference. And when we also consider all the money the dealers will make from service and maintenance on the ICE vehicles, it is no surprise that Volkswagen dealers don't really want to sell these EVs. It is just bad for business. And Tesla has launched a new product, a microphone called Tesla Mic, designed for its in-car karaoke system. It's only available in China for now, and I think Asia is probably the right place for this product to find its biggest market. And even though the Berlin factory is not up and running yet, Tesla is wasting no time and will make a track to make Giga Berlin employees commute easier. Tesla is planning to run a shuttle train between Erkner and a new stop on the track south of the factory premises. The company will be responsible for the planning, construction and operation of its workers' shuttle, according to the ministry. Tesla will also be building a station for its employee train shuttle service. This is not new information, but just a confirmation of what was already in the plans. As we can see, that is what they are clearing trees for up in the corner of the area. And even though the Cybertruck is delayed, we did see the new version at Giga Texas Factory also getting a bit of charge. Can't wait to hear what kind of kilowatt this beast can actually charge with. And before we end off with a bit of fun, I just want to make a quick shout out to my new patrons and members of this YouTube channel. Natalie and George, Marcus Bloom, Michael Pastron, Lynn Grobs, Ocarts. Emma, thank you for watching members, Klolula. Luke 81 MTG, Cleo Claire, and my new best in Tesla superhero, Adam A. Not Black Adam, just Adam A. Thank you so much for all your support. I am doing this all by myself, but you guys are all the producers of this YouTube channel. Thank you. And a big and special shout out to Supporter of the Week. And this week's winner is Steven Rosen. Steven has been a member of mine for the last six months and he's a best in Tesla superhero. So thank you so much for all your support, Steven, and all your kind words you leave in the comments. Much appreciated. And let's end off with a bit of fun. This is one thing you can't do with your Tesla, but don't try this at home. <laughs> Thank you.
that is all we have time for in this new show. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help out this video a lot. And if you did like it, maybe you want to consider hitting that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos just like this one. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. And if you want to support the channel even more, remember you can for as little as $1 become a patron of this channel and get your shout out on this show. You can also become a member of the YouTube channel to get a shout out and some extra perks. Hit the members button to find out more. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter. I tweet all the news as it comes out and more. And check out the merch store to get some merchandise and support the show. Now it's also possible to support the show without buying anything, becoming a member or a patron. There is a link to a donation options in the show notes. But going forward, I will be making more videos for patrons and members only. And I will give my YouTube members and patrons early access to my videos whenever possible and make my videos ads free for members and patrons only. So don't miss out. And thank you for watching. And until next time, take care out there and be nice. <laughs>